So my next guest is known for her best-selling book, The Diana Chronicles. And now 25 years on, author Tina Brown's latest royal biography is making headlines once again. Lots of headlines. The Palace Papers tells the inside story of the British monarchy over the past quarter of a century. I'm delighted to say that Tina joins me now. Um, wow. <laughs> what a book. Honestly, if you ever want to feel like a fly in the wall of any of the palaces, this is it. This Thank is you. it. So interesting, though, that you said all the royals sort of agreed after Diana died, very sadly died, never again. We're not going to have this happening again, didn't they? Correct. That was the mantra in the palace. Yeah. Never again. Um, there was a desire never again to have a member of the family whose celebrity, whose popularity, whose sort of charisma was such that... It dwarfed almost mm. the monarchy. Everyone in the monarchy, you know, is in, in the royal family is supposed to be there to support the monarchy. They're essentially, you know, high-born scaffolding, if you like. <laughs> I like that. Right, to hold up right. the monarch. Sure. They're not supposed to be out there with a, their own power base. Mm. And... That's very interesting, isn't it? And do you think that's why the whole thing with Meghan was doomed and it was never going to work? Because it could have. Well, I mean, of course, the irony of Never Again is... That's, they worked so hard to get beyond it. And then, of course, blindsided, along mm. comes Meghan. And suddenly, they're into it again. They're into this whole question of celebrity versus uh, royalty, essentially. Yeah. And how they clash, essentially. They do. They're mm. a whole different worldview. It's and really interesting what you say in the book, and it's made headlines already, even before, you know, before the book was out, um, that she, didn't, she hated the Australian tour yeah. and didn't quite understand what she was getting herself into. She just she didn't, didn't like realise. It at all. She, um, she found the, the whole kind of representational job of suppressing your own views, yep. essentially, and representing uh, the monarchy, for her, was, was just anathema. You know, she, she, it's, it's not what, how, she, how she viewed her role, the world, anything. She didn't understand the point of it. Mm. Um, and... Uh, you know, she, for her, it was like, yes, she was a great success, but it was not something that she wanted to do. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think that, that was her fundamental, in a sense, kind of misunderstanding of what was right. going to happen when she joined the royal family. She saw the palaces. She saw Diana as this huge, you know, global humanitarian superstar. Yeah. But maybe actually forgot that, you know, for 16, 17 years, Diana worked like a dog you know, inside the royal family, doing a great deal of very, you know, humdrum assignments, essentially. It was her incredible charisma she brought to that job that made her so extraordinarily special. Mm -hmm. And actually, Diana was always a change agent from within. I mean, she didn't leave the royal family because she said, you know, I'm out. Yeah. She got divorced. Um, her husband wasn't in love with her. That was the major problem for Diana. Of course. And... That was her kind of the agony for her. And uh, she made the, the greatest thing she could out of it. She took that suffering and turned it into, sort of sublimated it, you know, into her uh, remarkable work that she did, uh, which was really what, real and, and, and important. Mm. And after she was out of the royal family, she became much more global, not only because she wanted to be, but actually because she couldn't really be anything that but that, because she was no longer part of the royal machine. Exactly, that's mm -hmm. exactly it. And what's so interesting as well about the book was, you know, a lot of people are, are blaming Meghan on the fact that uh, Harry and William have got problems with their relationship, but that was actually happening before. You know, there were, there were cracks there maybe a little yeah. bit before that. There were, there were real cracks mm. that were happening, which I learned, which surprised me, actually. I mean, the, the sort of uh, common wisdom is, oh, you know, Meghan broke up the brothers. That's actually unfair. You know, mm. she she um, was probably unfair about Yoko Ono and the Beatles. Yeah, too. that's that's the, that's the image. <laughs> that I yeah, thought, yeah. Uh, she, um, you know, it, it, she reinforced it, if you like, mm. or, or the situation reinforced that problem. But the fact is that that Harry and and, and William had begun to have, a, you know, a sort of growing dissidence between them because. Harry was so happy in the army. You know, he, he had 10 amazing years. He served his country, went twice to Afghanistan. He was super brave. He was, he was really, you know, uh, it was a great success, sure. his whole military career. But when he came out, you know, he felt sort of rootless. You yeah, know, a bit he, lost. He felt a bit yeah. lost. He felt really a bit lost. And he kind of rattled around. Mm. What his brother was now set on the path for kingship. You know, William was now being groomed to be king. His... Destiny was clear, his, his path was clear. Yeah. 
And at that point, really, the memo suddenly kind of hit him that, that he was number two. Mm. And he was going to be treated as a number two, inevitably. He was not going to get the same plum assignments that, 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 that William did. And he mm. began to feel sort of marginalised. And when he started Invictus Games, which was, you know, his wounded warrior yeah. uh, 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 competing games, giant success. Oh, I mean, huge. I mean, and, amazing thing And to a do. wonderful initiative, actually. Yay. That really, again, it was like it was a superstar moment for mm. Harry and has continued to be. Um, and he kind of realised, I can do this myself. I've, mm. I've got my own power base, if you like, right. which I have. And it was at that point that he met Meghan and she reinforced that sense for him that there was a bigger, wider world out right. there than being, like, the number two brother who had to kind of wait in line for the royal assignments. Mm. How much damage do you think they've done at, at all to the monarchy? Do you think there is any damage done? I think they are an open wound a bit in, in, yeah. in, in the monarchy, actually, because they ha this has happened at a point when, in the past, whenever there were these, you know, the storms that, that buffeted, as yeah. they have, all the way through... I mean, the 90s was a really tough time for, mm. for the Queen and, and Philip and, and, you know, with the whole Diana and all the divorces. and I mean, it was a nightmare for yeah. them. But the Queen was younger and there was, there was always her at the centre, mm. the keep calm and carry on. And she hold had it, her hold husband, it all together. She and she had Philip. Now. And they were a unit. Now, of course, the Queen, uh, we're at the moment, you know, in the twilight years of her mm. reign, she doesn't have Philip with her anymore. Mm. Her health is not good. And that's the big vulnerable difference mm. now to uh, what things were like before. And also, the worst scandal of all, of course, and I know he's denied everything, but Prince Andrew. And in your book, there's a shocking... I mean, you know, you, you think you can't be shocked by Prince Andrew anymore, but his attitude to his ex-wife. There's a story that you tell in the book that's terrible. Yeah, that was a shocking thing. Um, uh, an executive uh, from a media company went to visit uh, the Duchess of York about a TV show, and they were talking, and... Andrew came in and he said, uh, he said, what are you talking to this fat cow about? Um, and I, I mean, can't I'm, believe, well, I'm, I can't I'm, believe it. Sadly. I'm hoping that was an aberration. Right. But or his attempt at humour, but... Perhaps it was his you. attempt at humour, but it was... It was wince time. Awful. It was wince time. Uh, he, unfortunately, Andrew is just... You know, there's an oafishness to him, right? Always was. Boorish. Uh, boorish, yeah. Boorishness yeah. to him, there always was. And, you know, it was tolerated until it t tipped over into this appalling situation mm. with, with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and, and, of course, you know, the, uh, the question mark over the underage... Mm. Uh, his relationship with the underage Virginia Jeffrey. So, yes, but she, again, you know, totally denies, although he did... Yes, the totally out, denies but it. Totally but denies. The fact is, it, it's created the most awful uh, sort of blemish on the family mm. that has been, I think, very, very painful for them. Yeah, the Queen had him escort her at the at the memorial for, for Prince Philip, so she clearly thinks that, you know, she clearly supports him, but having said that, she is nobody's fool and she knows the reaction. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what It's happened. very painful. I mean, Andrew's Sorry. always denied it, as you say, and the Queen's attitude will be, you know, certainly innocent till proven guilty. Mm. But at the same mm. time... Um, she also understands that, you know, she got a whole petition from members of the armed services saying he has to be stripped mm. of his military honours. And I think it was very painful for her to have to do that. I mean, essentially, yeah. to cancel your own son, that's a hard thing to do. Oh, uh, It's yeah. a really hard thing mother, to do. any mother, of course. Yeah. And yet, as you say, she, he escorted her on, at the funeral, mm. and I think the Queen will always have this compartmentalised life where her family is her family, but right. nothing can hurt the monarchy. No, that's very true. The future mm. of the monarchy, then... You know, if we look ahead to Charles and Camilla and then to, you know, after that to William and Kate, safe, do you think? I think Charles is going to be a very good transitional monarch. I really do. And the best thing for him is he has been so happily married to Camilla for the last 20 years. One of the things I came to in the book, actually, was how important marital love is for the success or failure Yep. of being in that family. It's true probably of any family, but in particularly into the glare and the scrutiny That's that they're in. It has to be a partnership, as yeah. it was between the Queen Mother, you know, and, and George VI when she was his consort, mm. you know, during his lifetime. She nurtured him and, and, and helped him to be, become a good king, even though he was a very shy man. Yeah. I think Philip was very important to the Queen. You know, he was her truth-teller 
He was yeah. the person who could always be relied on to, you know, never to never to throw smoke at her, to, sure. to tell her what, what as it was, give her advice, give her his support. It was crucial for her to yeah. have him. I think she would have been a much more timid monarch, actually, yeah. without without Philip to also kind of guide her towards change and evolution. Mm. Um, and you see the same thing, of course, with you know, with William and, and Catherine. That that marriage is like you know, is like a rock. And and in fairness, you know, I mean, Harry has found true love with Meghan. Mm. I think that you know, he was willing to give it all up, you know, yeah. for her. So in that sense, uh, I, I'm glad for him that he has of course, found this, of course. This, this, this true feeling that in his mother, sadly, never really found except no. at the end with, you know, Dr Khan and then it was out of the question. So sad, yeah. so, so sad. There's so much in here, Tina. I, I could you, actually Lorraine. talk to you for days. <laughs> um, you are responsible for me having no sleep because I had oh, to finish so it. Pleased. It's such a great book and it's a fantastic insight. I mean, there are moments in here that you will... It's jaw-dropping. Um, <laughs> Tina, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very Glad much you indeed. Enjoyed it. And Tina's book, The Palace Papers, is out right now. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.